I was born here in Sleeman, Arizona, April 19th, 1927, on Old Route 66. This is a new alignment of 1933. I graduated from high school and I had a dream to become a barber. My father was a self-taught barber and he bought this chair April 10th, 1926 for $194. Wow. After I went to barber college, <clears throat> Passed my apprenticeship. I served my apprenticeship in Williams. Barber College was in Pasadena, California. I opened my dad's old pool hall and barber shop, May the 22nd, 1950, at 9 o'clock. That's the building right there that he built. My mother, a picture of, my, of the building of the barber shop that I opened up, May the 22nd, 1950. It's one block south, one block west. Moved into this building in 1972, and everything was going real good until traffic stopped. September 22nd, 1978, at about 2.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> traffic stopped. The reason it stopped is because they opened the freeway from Kingman to Ash Fork, a distance of 100 miles, and we were bypassed. Statistic has it that there was 9,000 automobiles used on this Route 66 every 24 hours. Wow. The town died for 10 long years. No one came hardly. No one came. You open your door for business and very little business. And to make a long story short, I'm the one that called that now famous meeting for February the 18th, 1987, here in Seligman, Arizona, at the Copper Cart Restaurant, which is a gift shop now. There are 14 gift shops in Seligman, Ralph's 66 gift shops. First thing we did, we formed the Historic Route 66 Association of Arizona. After talking about it for half a dozen years, I finally told the Sligman Chamber of Commerce, if you don't like my idea, I'll do it myself. So I called that meeting February the 18, 1987. So Sligman has the distinction of being the little town where Route 66 got its historic rebirth. The United States government finished building the freeways in 1984. In 1985, October 1985, they decertified it, decommissioned it, brought the signs down from Chicago to Santa Monica, and told the world the end of Route 66. You can want a freeway, there it is. By the early 1980s, we creatures being creatures of habit, a few of the people with gray hair like his and I, <laughs> in their 60s and 70s, a few trickled into Seligman, and here's what men and women all told me. They all sounded like a recording. They told me, oh, incidentally, this used to be a barber shop. Uh, this used to be a pool hall, and I'm still a barber. Mm -hmm. I semi-retired 17 years ago when I was 70. Now I just do public relations barbering. <laughs> okay, so when these people start coming in here, in their 60s, 70s, and some of the 80s, men and women all sound like a recording. They told me, when I was a little boy, when I was a little girl, this has got to be the highway that my parents used to go to the land of milk and honey, California. During the Dust Bowls, when it quit raining in the Midwestern states, and they couldn't raise a crop to feed themselves, let alone the cattle, well, this is a highway that a quarter of a million people migrated from the Midwestern states to California. Wow. They all told me the same thing. So the idea was born, here is how to recuperate, uh, how, how to bring back tourists to Seligman, the industry, how to recuperate it. So we formed the Historic Route 66 Association. So Seligman became the little town that is known for for being the place for Route 66 got its rebirth. Our government says the end of it. And we, the people, said no, it's here. So we asked the Department of Transportation, Mr. E. Leroy Brady, Chairman of Parkways and Historic Roads. How can I forget that name after 20 some years ago? He totally ignored our letters our phone calls. The Historic Cross 6 Association, where is that? Seligman, where's Seligman? We were completely 
ignored. Then, to make matters worse, when when they finished building the freeway, you you folks know where Flagstaff, Arizona, is at? Mm -hmm. Seventy miles. We were bypassed, and we found out that there wasn't one sign that said Seligman leaving Williams or leaving Flagstaff. There wasn't one sign approaching Williams. There wasn't one sign leaving Williams. There wasn't one sign approaching Ash Fork that said Seligman, Arizona. We were completely, totally ignored. We were raped. The, tra the traveling public, when they saw that sign, or they saw signs that didn't mention Seligman, they did see one sign approaching Williams that said Kingman, a hundred and some miles. So they stopped and bought in Williams and in Ash Fork. They slept there, and by the time they saw us, it was goodbye. So folks, the state finally made it historic from here to Kingman the same year in 1987. Our U.S. government has now designated from the Arizona-California border to the New Mexico Arizona border, they have dig, 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 designated. designated it the scenic byways and the all-American byways. All right. All right. Fabulous. I that have now been serious. interviewed over 700 times by the news media, national and international. I'm one of the many that's being interviewed. Uh, a crew from Korea just left here. They came to size me up. <laughs> they want to interview me next Tuesday. Oh, wow. wow. But, but why is the news media so interested in telling this story? You know why I found out? Because it is the work of we, the common people. It wasn't the governor that called the meeting, state legislature, congressman, brilliant, a brilliant history teacher out of our colleges, a brilliant, powerful lawyer. No, it was just a Dumb dumb. <laughs> no, not dumb dumb. Very, very smart well, man. They consider us that when we talk yeah, to the state. Yeah. They completely ignored me. For ten long years, I was so sad, and then I was so angry when I found out that not even any signs. So, wow. Here, here we are, alive and well. Despite their best efforts. <laughs> That's right. In spite of their best efforts. We, yeah. You know, when you fight City Hall, you hardly ever win. I know, and you did it. We fought the state. But you know what? Being born in 27 and growing up during the Depression, I'm one of nine children. I'm third from the bottom. No one had anything. You had to do with what you had, make do with what you had. You had to scrape for every penny, every nickel, every dime. There was no work. I was hired to paint for 10 cents an hour when I was 12. And the lady didn't need a painter. What did I know about painting at the age of 12? She just felt sorry for us. My brother used to work for her 10 cents an hour. Wow. So anyhow, folks, uh, we, have, we have helped to save a little bit of America, and what you folks may not know is the world is so entreated by what we did here. Uh, it seems as though the world in general is so tired of the fast way of life, the high-tech world, that when they come to Seligman, which is America of yesterday, or any town on Route 66, smaller towns, they can sort of just relax, and they are, they, they are back in yesterday. So, so we get people. Right now, there's no buses in the morning. There might.